Class is now in session. I'm Professor Hockey, and today we will be discussing game nine of the regular season in which the Sharks have once again lost to the Buffalo Sabres, once again by a score of four to three, but there is some decent news is that that loss came in overtime and as such the Sharks still managed to get themselves a point. Now the bad news is that even with that point the Sharks currently are 3-5-1, and one, seven points on the year which puts them squarely last place in the Pacific Division. Still early in the season but not a great start and one of the worst starts the Sharks have had in a while. Now the first period started off and uh while the Sharks weren't fantastic, they were still quite good, and they were good on where it matters, which was the scoreboard. The Sharks managed to get two goals in the first period to zero for the Sabres. That was Gambrell's first ever NHL regular season goal, as well as Vlasic's first goal of the year. But after that, the Sharks basically sort of just fell asleep in the second period. The Sabres managed to get goals from Eichel on the power play, as well as Reinhardt. Two plays in which the Sharks were in the defensive zone failed to clear the puck out out and the Sabres just a few seconds later would manage to score so some unforced errors or I guess maybe they're somewhat forced errors by the Sharks but still things you'd like to see them be able to do it was Brendan Dillon on that Eichel one that just he, he fanned on it completely while on the penalty kill which is not something you want to see then coming into the third period Jeff Skinner immediately scored in the first 45 seconds to take the lead back for them however after that point the Sharks seemed to wake up again as if oh wait wait we were actually trailing in this game now and so they started to try and they managed to get a goal from Eric Carlson also his first of the year and we went into the overtime tied at three this was the first three on three overtime for the Sharks this season I was excited to see it and well I'll get to it a bit later but in the end it is Jack Eichel getting his second goal of the game and the Sabres took the victory first thing to talk about would be Martin Jones who actually had himself pretty good game you could all things considered yes he did let in four goals but I wouldn't really put any blame on on him for I any of these potentially the second Eichel goal the overtime one it was a two-on-one so it was a difficult save to make originally on wrist line and shot but you would have liked to see him be able to hold that rebound there were a couple times in this game actually where he failed to hold the rebound and it caused a scramble in front of the net so he did make some fantastic saves in particular on Eichel in the second period when the Sharks were just sleepwalking through those 20 minutes but it is still four goals in the end and so it's hard to call this one a fantastic game for Martin Jones but what I can say is that he's far from the problem here for the Sharks especially in these last couple of games Next, I will talk about Noah Gregor, who managed to find himself in the lineup tonight, and it was a bit odd because of the fact that I pointed out last game how he was okay, but he wasn't particularly impressive. I didn't even think he was that much better than Bergman, who you could say he was playing instead of, and Radil was actually healthy, so he could have come back into this game, but DeBoer decided to go with Gregor again and I found it odd that DeBoer had promoted Gregor to the th to the second line in the third period of last game against Buffalo and then Gregor started on the second line in this game I don't know what DeBoer's seeing in Gregor that I'm not but again he was thoroughly unimpressive with both Kane and Hurdle on the second line through the first couple of periods and once he made the fatal error of watching the puck that led to that Jeff Skinner goal early in the third period I don't believe he actually got another shift in the game and we saw I believe LeBanc back onto that second line. So all things were restored. I'd be surprised if we saw Gregor again in the following game, but he should remain in with the team because they are on this road trip. So it'd be kind of weird to send him back to the Barracuda at this point. Next, I will talk about Patrick Marlowe, a player who had shown up with the Sharks. He played a solid game in Chicago, but we haven't seen much of him as of late. I was actually thinking early in this game that we haven't seen much from the Meyer Tour and Marlowe line even strength, but we got something from them tonight. Marlowe actually got two points in this one. He had a beautiful assist on the Market Ward Vlasic goal, so it was nice to see. So basically, the point is I want to see just a bit more consistency. This is still the Sharks' first line, and so while Patrick Marlowe isn't necessarily a first line player he is with this he ha does have this duty and with Meyer and Couture both being first line players you're hoping that they can maybe carry the slack a bit it hasn't happened all too much in these past five games with Marlowe we've seen it a couple of times but I do want to see it a bit more consistently because the Sharks offense does sorely need it Finally, I will talk about the overtime. As I said, this was about three, just over three minutes of overtime. 
and it was probably the worst overtime the Sharks have played in a long time, at least three on three. And there have been overtimes in the past where, you know, the other team would win the faceoff, they'd possess the puck for 30 seconds, and then they'd go to score. But the thing about this one is that the Sharks basically got zero possession, and it lasted over three minutes. It was just quite embarrassing. And especially when the time the Sharks actually managed to touch the puck, they just completely failed in that regard. LeBanc in particular had a really rough overtime. He first gets this puck. He, he is facing a lot of pressure, so he ends up giving the puck away. Not too much blame there, but still you'd probably hope for a better play. The second time he gets the puck with not too, too much pressure, and yet he decides to pass it back to Jones, who's not at all expecting this pass, so it again goes back into Buffalo possession. And then the f next error, it's finally Eric Carlson who manages to step up. He rushes out of the zone with speed. Speed. You're expecting maybe a play. It looks like a potential 2 on 1, but LeBanc seemingly is not there for the 2 on 1. Carlson doesn't notice. He passes it to nobody, which ends up in back in possession for the Sabres. So you're hoping either Carlson takes a shot. You're hoping either Carlson just possesses the puck and does what the Sabres were doing for the full overtime and just hold it in the neutral zone, waiting for some changes to come on. But instead, the Sharks seem to take the wrong turn at every single direction. And all of a sudden, they end up losing in about three minutes with barely having ever actually done anything in this overtime. So the first overtime of the season, pretty embarrassing for the San Jose Sharks. I would say hopefully the next one is better, but I can't imagine how it could possibly be worse. So uh, it's, I guess it's only up going up from here. But that will do it for this review. The Sharks will be back in action on Thursday. They will face off against the Montreal Canadiens in the second of this five-game road trip. As I said, they currently find themselves last in the Pacific Division. So the wins definitely need to start coming. They have historically had a lot of trouble with the Buffalo Sabres. So I guess it's not too much of a surprise if you take a look at that, that they lost these past two games, but historically they've had a lot of success against the Montreal Canadiens, so if you're someone who is into the history of the San Jose Sharks, maybe you have something to look forward to, because I'm sure Sharks fans need something to look forward to at this point. Class dismissed.